Okay. All right. So today we're going to try to get through transitions and uh, paragraph organization. So for, uh, you know, at the end here, and from the time basis that I took over from Rachel, um, we've been working on sort of how to become a better writer, building on those ideas, taking it from, you know, uh, even after I started, we, we weren't even dealing with like the simple sentences anymore or that much of the, um, you know, parts of speech, we were getting into the, the, bigger ideas, you know, more uh, compound and complex sentences and how to make them flow and making sure, you know, our subject and verbs agree when we don't have them close to each other. And this is just kind of a continuation. We're moving now beyond the sentence and we're looking at the structure for um, how to build, you know, longer, uh, um, you know, passages. So, not just uh, the idea of um, you know, our sentence structure, but paragraph structure and how that kind of is going to fit into essays and longer writing. And it's all the same really, no matter if it's a simple sentence or an essay or a research paper, the same kind of rules apply. So, you know, just as, like a simple sentence, you have a subject, when you move to a paragraph, you're gonna have a topic sentence for that. Um, but before we get into that, we'll get into that in the next lesson. Um, we'll talk about transitions now and I'm going to say hi to Amina. And I apologize yesterday for forgetting to send out a, uh, <laughs> a text to let you guys know that I was going to the dentist. So that was on me. I meant to send it. And uh, I thought my uh, appointment was at 12 and my wife's like, your appointment's at 1140. So I had to jump in the car and go over to the dentist and I forgot to send out that uh, text because I was going to send it up at the same time I usually send out the ones for class. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, because Rachel texted me. She's like, hey, I'm just trying to get your class. I'm like, oh, I forgot to send out the text. So, um, all right, we'll get rolling here uh, for our transitions lesson today. By the time you complete this lesson, you will be able to use transitions to show connections between ideas. This is what we're talking about, building beyond the sentence, connecting ideas between sentences into paragraphs. So let's see what we're dealing with here. A good writer uses transitions or words and phrases that show connections between ideas to create a complete work. Transitions connect ideas within a paragraph and also lead readers logically from one paragraph or section to the next. Yeah, so just words or phrases typically appear at the beginning of a sentence uh, that are going to help us connect those ideas beyond just one sentence. Like we use conjunctions uh, like and and but or, or inside a sentence, we have transition words that will help us connect ideas between sentences. Same sort of idea at work there. All right, so let's take a look. So we have words and phrases uh, that often signal a transition, and we want to be careful as far as when and how we use them, because it's going to depend on what the um, context of the sentence may be. Uh, so over in our box, we see a transitional word or phrase often appears at the beginning of a sentence. In this position, it usually it's, it is usually followed by a comma. Nevertheless, I was still very tired. Uh, so we set it off as an introduction, uh, just like we would other you know, phrases. And uh, so if you see in our first box, some of the typical transitional words that you'll see uh, related to time is first, subsequently, next, earlier, then, later, finally, yesterday, after that, today. So they show, uh, you know, a sense of, of movement and time. You may use them if you're using uh, sort of, you're connecting sort of a list of ideas. You know, if, you know, finally, uh, you know, if, if you're kind of wrapping things up in a conclusion type of statement, you might want to use finally. Uh, 
or you know, like all the ones earlier, later, yesterday, those all indicate a sense of time, the passage of time. And then similarity, likewise, furthermore, also similarly, in addition, in the same way, what's more, equally, moreover, just as. So we would use those <clears throat> uh, when we have ideas that are similar between the two sentences. Uh, so if you're following up with additional information that's related to the last sentence, you would use one of those statements. Moreover, uh, furthermore, those are ones I use quite a bit when I write. And then opposed to similarity is contrast. So if we're making a point other than what we just talked about, we'll use something like although, on the other hand, but, nevertheless, despite, nonetheless, however, yet, in contrast, conversely. And we'll have some examples here to show you on that. And then here we see some transitional words join ideas within a sentence. So you can use these within a sentence too, and we've encountered that, you know, particularly with things like but and however. Uh, so their example, I was tired, although I had slept for nine hours. And then here it says, study the sentences below for examples of how to use transitions. So first I bought groceries, then I did laundry and washed the car. So we see there that passage of time. We see movement first and then. So we use the transition at the beginning there. Uh, not necessarily a transition. It's more of an introduction when we use first, if that's going to be at the beginning of our idea. or uh, You wouldn't necessarily put that at the beginning of a paragraph to start your paragraph. Uh, but if you're you know, listing you know, the things that you did during the day first, I bought groceries, then I did laundry and washed the car. And then if you had another point to make, you would use something like, finally, I you know, made dinner or something like that. The next one, he was nervous. However, he didn't let his emotion show. And you can see in our, our list of, of contrasts, a lot of those would work in that situation. We could make that one sentence. We could say, I called several times and got no answer, comma, but I was able to reach him. Or you could use nevertheless, in contrast, you know, most of those will work in that situation. All right. So our quiz. Does that make sense? The transitions, where we're going to use them, how to use them? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, something to keep in mind, and I noticed this, you know, with, with our quizzes and our workbooks, they get kind of nitpicky. Uh, it gets a little bit subjective as far as what they're really looking for. And you have to pay really close attention to the context of the sentence. Ask yourself, it's like, well, is this similar? Or are they talking about time? Or are they talking about contrast? Is, uh, especially when you're taking a test of things, a lot of these words will sound pretty good. Like, well, that sounds decent, um, but it, it's not specifically what they want. And we'll see if we encounter that down here. Okay, so uh, test taking tips, you know, other expressions such as therefore, thus, otherwise, and consequently indicate cause and effect. Uh, expressions such as for example, and in this, key, in this case, also explain the connection of ideas. <clears throat> so we, there's, you know, it, it doesn't just have to be time, similarity, or contrast, it can also be, you know, consequences or things like that. You can use those transition words. There's, there's a sort of a broad spectrum uh, where they apply. Okay, our first question here. Juanita loves music and is a talented pianist. Consequently, her twin sister is not interested in music and cannot play the piano. What would we want to change consequently here? In contrast. In contrast, B. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, consequently, you know, that doesn't work, right? Uh, <laughs> because Juanita loves music doesn't mean that her sister doesn't, right? That's not a cause and effect. That's not a consequence. Uh, but 
the fact that Juanita loves music and her sister doesn't, that's contrast. So here we want to use the word in contrast uh, for our transition. All right. So now our passage. Uh, dress for success. When you're going on a job interview, your appearance matters. The saying is true. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. The next time you are unsure about what to wear, consider these tips. Wear clothes that are simple and conservative. You want to match the environment of the workplace. What well, we want here, for example, afterward, in addition, otherwise. Um, see? This is one of those I was talking about. In addition, actually, it will kind of work, right? Uh, you want to match the environment of the workplace. In addition, uh, if others will be wearing suits, you know. The answer is A, for example. A actually, yeah, A is what we want there. Um, and it kind of goes back to looking at what the first couple sentence were. So we haven't started with an example yet. Um, so in this case, uh, in addition, you would actually be looking for examples or um, some some other information. So if it's it wanted, to, you know, if you started like with you want to match the environment of the workplace, in addition would work if you were adding something after that next sentence. So in this case, yeah, for example is what we're looking for. But this is exactly what I was talking about. There, they get a little nuanced. You got to really pay attention. All right, uh, your hair and fingernails should be clean and neat. Choose a simple hairstyle that is flattering to your face. Clean, well-groomed hands suggest attention to detail. Women should choose something simple and subtle that does not attract negative attention. What? Therefore. What was that? Therefore. Therefore. C. And again, you know, some of those other ones will, you know, we're at the end of a sentence. Finally, doesn't sound bad. Similarly, doesn't sound bad. But in this case, we're looking at sort of a, the cause and effect. Therefore, they should avoid bright or unusual polish collars. C. When choosing accessories, understatement is the key. Do not wear too much jewelry, cologne, or perfume. Too much jewelry can look gaudy. On the other hand, however, in contrast, likewise. 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 Yes, D. This is what we were talking about here. Moreover would work, furthermore kind of similar, right? We're adding information to that idea of too much jewelry. What else do we want to avoid? Likewise, too much cologne or perfume may cause discomfort to those around you. Um, do not chew gum or suck on mints, but make sure that your mouth is clean and your breath fresh. A winning <laughs> smile will attract others to you. Although you want to be yourself and dress in a way that suits your personality and style, remember that your goal is to be noticed for your skills and abilities. Your appearance should make a nice. So now we're transitioning in the middle of a sentence. Impression, just as, but similarly. Mm -hmm. B. But, yeah, your appearance should make a nice impression, comma, but it should not distract the interviewer, right? We have a little bit of contrast there. You want to look nice. However, nevertheless, it should not distract the interviewer. So B, there we go, A, C, D, and B. Okay. And on to the workbook. <clears throat> All right, transitions connect ideas in writing. They can show the order in which events occurred, indicates 
indicate ways in which events may be similar or different or provide an example or explanation of a statement. Transitional words and phrases may occur within sentences, between sentences, between paragraphs, and between sections of text. Using transitions helps create logical and fluid writing. And here we go again. So remember that transitions show the relationship between two pieces of information. Use transitions <laughs> within one sentence, like we just saw before. I like this just as I like that. I like both items to the same degree, right? It's basically saying the same thing, but we're using that transition in the first one. I like this, although I do not like that. Same kind of idea. I like one thing, but not the other. <clears throat> and here I liked this. Subsequently, I liked that. So in addition, that's sort of that idea there. After I liked one thing, I liked another related thing. And it says over here, some transitions mean the same thing and are used interchangeably. For example, nevertheless, nonetheless, both mean in spite of, depending on the sentence, however, but, and yet can have the same meaning. And down below, remember that a comma often follows a transition when the word or phrase comes at the beginning of a sentence. So using uh, transitions between sentences here, I have a new cell phone. However, there's our comma. However, it is difficult to use. So that's basically saying despite being new, the cell phone isn't easy to use. Next, I went swimming, then I ran to the store. After going swimming, I ran to the store. That's what you're saying there. And then last one, I believe taxes are too high. For example, sales tax is 8%. So we're throwing that in, for example, to help the two ideas flow together in two sentences. Sales tax is 8%. And all it's saying is an 8% sales tax is an example of a tax that is too high. But you see how that's kind of wordy. We won't want to make a sentence like that. We can use two shorter sentences with our transition and it flows better. It sounds better. It's less awkward. All right, and then our content topics. Transitions often show causal relationships. I earned my GED certificate, therefore I achieved my goal. The word therefore explains that you achieved your goal because you earned your GED certificate, right? Cause and effect. Okay, next question here. I think my fiance is spending too much money on our wedding. I want her to be happy. Which transition is the most effective here? However. B, yes, however. Right, so, and, and, and you can tell right there, without that transition, that is a really awkward, uh, you know, set of sentences. I think my fiance is spending too much money on our wedding. Okay, I want her to be happy. Well, okay, those don't link up really well without that transition, right? You got to have something in there to help it flow. In this case, we're adding contrast with however. So the reader understands it's like, okay, we have some contrast here. It's not so jarring to move from that one idea, that one sentence to the next. And question two, he rarely drives, he has two cars. What's the most effective transition we want to add here? Although, uh, C, he drives, although he... Yes, C. And you can see it right there. Uh, he rarely drives, although he has two cars. Uh, once again, you know, we can, we can make that into one sentence. Uh, these two little abrupt sentences... They don't flow well together. Okay, so he rarely drives, he has two cars. We need something to tie that together uh, to help it make sense. And although helps add that contrast there so we understand what's going on, why are we relating that information the way we are? Okay, so writing a resume. 
a resume has one primary function to get you an interview. For some jobs, employers may receive hundreds of resumes. You want your resume, which may end up among stacks of others, to grab the attention of a potential to grab the attention of a potential employer. You want the information to cause this tired, overworked employer to think, I've got to meet this person. After that, in the same way, to begin earlier. I think the answer is C, to begin. I got C, it. To begin. Yeah. So, you know, we haven't started with any uh, tips yet, right? This is about um, making making or, or improving your resume. So to begin, follow these tips to get your resume to the top of the stack. And, you know, the other ones don't make much sense, right? After that, well, we haven't really passed time or in the same way. We haven't had any ideas that we're building on. And earlier, once again, is sort of showing the passage of time. So to begin is what we want to use there. A resume has two components, design and content. You want the design of your resume to be clean, neat, and easy to read. Employers have little time to read each resume. What's more, consequently, next, furthermore? I think the answer is C. C. This is one of those tricky ones. Employers have a little more? time. I'm sorry? What's more? It's actually B. Consequently. Consequently. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's one that you got to uh, focus on. So, employers have little time to read each resume. As a consequence, right, you can kind of switch it up. And, and if you want to change, uh, if you're looking at those um choices you know think about other transitional statements that may or may not make sense in there right so in, in like for consequently you could say as a consequence choose the information that is most relevant to the particular job um, does that make sense more so than you know say next well that doesn't really work because again that's kind of passage of time uh, furthermore, you know, could we put moreover, choose the information that is most relevant to you? Uh, think about the other phrases and see if they fit as well. Okay, so consequently, choose the information that is most relevant to the particular job or career field to which you are applying. Make this information easily accessible through text features such as bullets, boldface type, headings, subheadings, and so on. As for the content of your resume, Use descriptive, powerful language, especially verbs, to tell potential employers about your skills and qualifications. Point out how you will meet an employer's needs and how the employer will benefit by hiring you. Be thorough in describing your previous work, work experience. Moreover, for example, but or in contrast. I think the answer is C. Yes. C. So be thorough in describing your previous work, but don't try to cram a resume with everything you've ever thought, said, or done. Now, in contrast, doesn't, you know, it, uh, if you said describing your previous work experience, in contrast, I think that. There's an error here. It probably should also be don't. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but um, the only real issue there is, you know, it's it's a little wordier. Um, this one keeps our idea simple. It shows that contrast. You know, we're, we're transitioning. You know, you want to have uh, your previous work experience, everything that's relevant. 
However, nevertheless, don't try to cram a resume with everything you've ever thought, but works really well there. Okay, and then we start our next sentence. Therefore, subsequently, on the other hand, first. When writing your resume, choose relevant information and present it in active dynamic language in a design that is reader friendly and accessible. Therefore. A, therefore. Very good. Yep. Uh, so here we have C, B, C, A. All right, and we have a letter here. <clears throat> Dear Miss Churchman, I am responding to your listing. I think this is supposed to be a cover letter. So uh, I am responding to your listing with Aspen Architecture for a draft person. I believe that I would be an excellent fit for the position. I am currently an architecture student at Aspen Technical College. I am due to graduate in one semester. For this reason, in the same way, conversely, still. A, for this reason. Yes. For this reason, I am interested in beginning employment as an apprentice while finishing my education. So, you know, that those first few sentences there, the introduction, is talking about, you know, uh, finishing architecture school, uh, having some experience, and then for this reason, I am interested in being beginning employment. Uh, prior to beginning my education, I worked in home and commercial construction. This experience has proven quite useful in drafting as I understand the end result of my work. In contrast, however, nevertheless, moreover, I have real world experience and understand how technical drawings are used. Uh, I think we should use moreover. D, moreover, right? We are adding information. We are not contrasting information. We're not showing passage of time. We are adding to the idea here that you know, he's used, um, he, he is, has work experience, uh, has experience in drafting. Moreover, I have the real world experience and understand how technical drawings are used by construction professionals. To illustrate my capabilities, I would like to share with you my portfolio of construction work. I am punctual, hardworking, but however, consequently, nonetheless. <coughs> C, consequently. Consequently, right? All the other ones are about contrast, but however, nonetheless, uh, so, you know, we can insert that and see that it would sound awkward and not work well, right? So I am a punctual, hardworking person. Nevertheless, you are likely to find that I am the first to arrive. That doesn't make sense, but you are likely to find that I am the first to arrive. I am a punctual, hardworking person as a consequence. Consequently, you are likely to find that I am the first to arrive at the office in the morning and among the last to leave. My passion for and my energy in this field will certainly benefit your company. Please contact similarly in addition otherwise. Please contact. Yeah, that's a trick one, right? Because we don't need a, a transition there. Uh, there there's, there's just no need for it. So please contact me for uh, an interview at your earliest convenience. Okay, so A, D, C, A. Okay, our last passage here, lease agreement. And these are always fun because when you get into uh, legal ease, when you get into contracts and leases and everything, you get some crazy language. Um, they can get kind of confusing and they use a lot of transitions too. So, Leases agree to pay as rent the total sum of $9,000. This sum will be paid in 12 monthly installments of $750. The monthly rent is due on or before the first day of each month during the lease term. 
Rent received after the fifth day of the month will be subject to a $50 late charge plus $10 per day after the fifth day of the month until paid in full. Nevertheless, in addition, for example, conversely, if rent is paid on the 10th of the month, the total amount due will be $750 plus $100 in late fees. See? You say C? Yeah. C, right? It immediately goes into an example. You know, it, it, so if you think about that, it was like, we'll be subject to a $50 late charge plus $10 per day after the fifth day of the month until paid in full. If rent is paid on the 10th of the month, the total amount due will be $750 plus 100. So it's, a, it's giving you an example, you know, for example, if rent is paid. Uh, so C for that. Leases agree to provide a $750 security deposit to the landlord before obtaining possession of the premises. I don't know why they capitalize premises here, but we're going to encounter that for some reason. Leases agree to submit to the landlord a move-in checklist indicating the condition of the premises within one week of obtaining possession. First, earlier at that time yesterday. The landlord will have three days to repair all problems noted. C. C, at that time. Uh, so all of those dealt with passage of time right, first earlier at that time yesterday. Uh, so we have to kind of zone in on, okay, does it make sense if it's before? Does it make sense if it's after? When is this falling? So leases agree to submit to the landlord a move-in checklist indicating the condition of the premises within one week of obtaining possession. So once that happens, right, at that time, comma, the landlord will have three days to repair all problems noted on the move-in checklist. Then, consequently, furthermore, in addition to, as a result of, vacating leases agreed to submit to the landlord a move-out checklist documenting the condition of the property. A, consequently. That's another tricky one. It's going to be B. Furthermore, yeah. So uh, if we look at it right, it's 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 adding two instead of contrast. So the landlord will have three days to repair all problems noted. Well, it's really it's the whole it's the whole passage, right? So leases provide a seven hundred fifty dollars security deposit to the landlord before obtaining possession of the premises. Uh, the next point is is really the important one. Leases agree to submit to the landlord a move-in checklist indicating the condition of the, pro, uh, of the premises. Down here, leases agree to submit to the landlord a move-out checklist. Same idea, right? So we're adding to that idea instead of taking it away or contrasting it. So furthermore, upon vacating, leases agree to submit to the landlord a move-out checklist documenting the condition <coughs> of the property. If necessary, the security deposit will be applied to unpaid utilities, unpaid rent, and re-rental expenses, as well as repair of damage to the premises beyond normal wear and tear. Leases understand that their liability for such damages is not limited to the amount of the security deposit. Leases agree that the premises will not be assigned or sublet without written consent of the landlord. Leases agree that only those who have signed this document shall occupy the premises. In addition, Nevertheless, after that, similarly. In addition. In addition, A, that is correct. So leases agree that only those who have signed this document shall occupy the premises. In addition, leases agree to use the premises only 
in the following ways. So, right, we're adding more information to that idea before. At least he's all agree that only those who have signed this document shall occupy the premises. Adding to that additionally, in addition, we're using the premises in a particular way. The premises will be occupied for residential purposes only and will not be used for any commercial purposes or for any purpose <clears throat> deemed hazardous by the landlord. And we have, for example, A, uh, C, C, B, and A. So <laughs> a lot of this is just, um, <clears throat> again, I'll try to find like a list of transition words uh, to put up on uh, the Google Classroom. So, you know, you guys could kind of take a look, uh, see what else, uh, other examples and, um, and how they're used to help you guys out with that. All right. Now, on to paragraph organization. So this is what we're talking about, you know, transitions, that's part of building better, larger paragraphs or ideas. Um, <clears throat> So here, by the time we complete this lesson, you will be able to organize paragraphs using topic sentences and supporting details. So every paragraph is gonna have a topic sentence, uh, something that's gonna draw your attention, let you know what's happening in the paragraph, right? Everything in that paragraph should be related to that topic sentence. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as you're, just like you know, we talked about, every time we, we sort of build on an idea, there's these principles that still uh, are similar to what we did before. So even with a simple sentence, we have a subject. So we go on and we're building paragraphs. Well, our paragraphs basically have a subject as well. That's in the topic sentence. Uh, and all the ideas in that paragraph will kind of be related to that um, topic sentence. Uh, even with big, like, uh, when I um, was writing my master's thesis, I had, uh, you know, if you're writing like a research paper or certain types of essays, right, you use a thesis sentence and everything ties back to that one idea, that argument that you make. So I wrote this big, boring three chapter thesis on tactical air command and everything I wrote about was basically related to that argument I made in that thesis sentence. Uh, so whether it's one paragraph, an essay, you know, like a three or four uh, paragraph essay. Um, every time you expand your idea out from a sentence, you use similar principles to build those ideas together. You want everything to flow using transitions and you want your, your ideas to connect one from the other uh, without, you know, being jarring, moving from one idea to the next without some type of transition without um you know making sense so let's take a listen here what they say about paragraphs. a paragraph features a topic sentence and supporting details the topic sentence of a paragraph is often the first or second sentence other sentences provide details that support the topic sentence a paragraph should be organized so that the details follow or lead to the topic sentence in a logical and orderly fashion. Right, so um, it's usually the first or second sentence. You might have like a little bit of a transition sentence uh, at the beginning of a paragraph before you get to your topic sentence. But other than that, um, your the rest of your paragraph is going to support what's in that topic sentence. And it should flow logically, um, whether it's uh, chronologically, in, in a sense of time, or the ideas should sort of connect to uh, each other through those sentences. And we'll get some examples here of what that means. Uh, so here, a topic sentence, the sentence explains the main idea of the paragraph. Often it is the first sentence, but it may appear anywhere else in the paragraph. These sentences support the supporting details. They support the topic sentence in a logical way. They may be organized by order of importance, time sequence, or other logical patterns. And just as you're, you know, building out from that, if you're writing an essay, those paragraphs will be linked to the major idea or your thesis. Um, all builds on top 
of itself on, on one another. And it says over here, a topic sentence provides a broad idea that the rest of the paragraph develops and supports. So <laughs> we start with that large, broader idea in our topic sentence, and then we tease it out through the rest of the paragraph. We make sure that they're all connected. Uh, if we're adding some, or, you know, instead of placing something weird in there, we'll use that in the next uh, paragraph uh, if we're moving on to other ideas. And then here, as you read a paragraph, think about the logical sequence of ideas and how one idea leads to another. Transition words help connect ideas. So going back to that last lesson, we're gonna use those transitions to help our writing flow through that paragraph. But everything in there should be linked. Okay, so our paragraph here says, archeological evidence suggests that tattoos have existed since prehistoric times. <clears throat> Cultures throughout history have used tattoos and other type, types of body markings for a variety of purposes. Body markings were used to indicate religious beliefs or to show that a person belonged to a particular group or tribe. Over time, tattoo art developed among several different cultures. Sailors returning from other areas of the world eventually brought tattoos to Europe. For example, the use of collar in tattoo design first appeared in Japan. And one of those is out of place. And we're gonna find out <laughs> which one when we move over to our quiz. Now, everything in that, in that paragraph is related, right? Start off with a broader idea of archaeological evidence suggests that tattoos have existed since prehistoric times. Tattoos, that is the subject of our paragraph, right? That is the main idea. But now we need to make sure that they're flowing logically. So what's going to happen here, if we look at sentence six, it's right here. Sentence six, for example, the use of collar in tattoo design first appeared in Japan. Very odd sentence to end a paragraph with. Doesn't really flow with the rest of the idea. Uh, so we need to move that. Well, let's look here. Where is that going to make better sense? Do we move it after sentence one, sentence four? Do we want to move it, remove it all together? I don't think we do because it, it definitely makes sense with the rest of the paragraph. Uh, or move it to follow sentence three. So where is that going to make sense? For example, use of collar and tattoo design first appeared in Japan. Any takers on that? Is there an option to put it after sentence two? There was. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, no, actually, no. <laughs> We're going to go with sentence four. Okay. okay. We're going to follow sentence four. Uh, so we definitely, you know, looked at it and said, ah, that doesn't really belong at the end of the paragraph, right? So if we put it after sentence four, you know, think about reading it like this. So starting with sentence three here, body markings were used to indicate religious beliefs or to show that a person belonged to a particular group or tribe. Over time, tattoo art developed among several different cultures. So we're, start, we're, we're, we're narrowing it down, right? Now we're talking about different cultures. So for example, the use of collar and tattoo design first appeared in Japan, and then we can finish the paragraph, sailors returning from other areas of the world eventually brought tattoos to Europe. So right there, B for that. This is a little complicated because we're going to have to read through some passages. We might have to sort of bounce up and down so we can see what we're doing here. I'll go ahead and read through um, this passage and then we'll work on it. So we often look to email as being the easiest and fastest way to communicate with others, but is it the best way? 
For people in the business world, one of the most important skills is the ability to communicate effectively with associates and clients. While other, well, I'm sorry, while personal computers enable people to respond quickly and efficiently through email, the telephone is still a business person's most effective marketing tool. A person's voice offers expression in uh, that an email cannot convey. There is nothing that compares to the personal connection that associates and clients get when they hear someone's voice at the other end of the telephone. The telephone allows family members to communicate information with each other, such as what time one will arrive at home. It enables relatives to share stories, ask questions, or voice concerns when they are not physically together. Telephones also enhance communication among family members. However, cell phone usage by children should be closely monitored. Cell phones are common even for children. Today's parents feel secure knowing that their children can contact them from any location. Finally, telephones enable instant access to emergency services. Yeah, services. In these ways, telephones make people safer by giving them immediate access to help. Emergency service providers such as police officers, firefighters, and doctors are all just a telephone number away. Distressed callers can reach these providers directly or contact them through the 911 system. With new cell phone technology, some of these services can be reached by the simple touch of a button. So real quick, right, just to break down the paragraphs. Um, <clears throat> the first one, we introduced this idea of the telephone being an important, still an important means of communication. And in some cases, more effective than email. Second paragraph, we're looking at the telephone usage of family members and helping them communicate. And we introduce cell phones there. And then finally, in the last sentence, we're looking at uh, telephone use and emergency services. That, you know, getting somebody on the phone, dialing 911 is the quickest <laughs> way to help somebody in an emergency. <clears throat> so, looking at that first paragraph, a person's voice offers expression that an email cannot convey. So that was sentence five. A person's voice offers expression that an email cannot convey. Is that in the correct place? Well, they're saying no, definitely. So where do we want to move that? Should it follow sentence one? Should it follow sentence six, sentence two, or sentence three? So keep that in mind. One, six, two, or three. And we'll move up and take a look. So person's voice offers expression that an email cannot convey. Now, it doesn't sound very good after one, right? Because we need more information. We haven't really, we just introduced the, the, the broad idea. So I don't know if that makes sense. I and think after six. After six, which is, is that B? Yes, it is. Uh, that's where we want to put it. That's kind of a, a, a wrap up idea. Uh, if you're kind of closing an argument or you're making a, an idea, it's, it's, it's kind of bold. It says a person's voice offers expression that an email cannot convey. We've introduced all these other points here about, you know, email. Uh, and, and, and then that last sentence, there is nothing that compares to the personal connection that associates, that associates and clients get when they hear someone's voice at the other end of the telephone. A person's voice offers expression that an email cannot convey, right? Those flow together that way. We're going to finish off that paragraph strong by dropping that at the end. Okay. And then down here. So we're moving to the next paragraph. Telephones also enhance communication among family members. Uh, so do we put that at the beginning? Are we going to move it 
after sentence 11? Is it going to follow sentence 7 or sentence 12? So right now it's setting sort of in the middle of the paragraph. Telephones also enhance communication among family members. Where would that sound better? Um, the beginning of the paragraph. The beginning of the paragraph. If you take a look at that, telephones also enhance communication among family members. Sort of broad, right? It's not um, real specific in its details. So it sounds like something that could be a topic sentence. So we move that up above all the other ones. Telephones also enhance communication among family members. The telephone allows family members to communicate information with each other, such as what time one will arrive at home. We're starting to narrow down the details after we move <clears throat> sentence nine up to the top. Now we're pairing things back as we go. And then, you know, eight enables relatives to share stories. We're getting more details under sentence nine. So that's going to be A. A. Why is that not? There we go. So <laughs> did not want to agree with me there. And again, we have uh, our second paragraph there that we're looking at. Uh, what do we do with sentence 10? However, cell phone usage by children should be closely monitored. So we doing that after 11, after 12, are we gonna remove it? Or are we going to follow that up after seven? Let's take a look. So right now, it's setting at number 10. It's after telephones also enhance communication. Oh, well that we would move up to the top. So let's just say it's coming after eight now, right? So it enables relatives to share stories, ask questions or voice concerns when they are not physically together. Now it certainly doesn't make sense after eight, right? However, cell phone usage by children should be closely monitored. Nope. What do we want to do with this? We're taking it out, removing it. We want it to go after 11 or 12 or 7. Doesn't make sense after 7 either, does it? After 11. After 11. Probably uh, that would work. Um, but in this case, what they're saying is just to remove it. Um, and I felt a little frustrated by this one, to tell you the truth. Uh, so, like you said, Capri, if we moved it after 11, right, because we're talking about cell phones there, and it says cell phones are common even for children. And then if you put, however, cell phone usage by children should be closely monitored. It flows. I, it does. And, you know, I, I only... It, this is a real nitpicky point, right? Because they're, what they're saying is it doesn't really fit with the rest of the idea. Um, you know, because the, the, the larger subject of the paragraph and the topic sentence is, you know, telephones enhance communication among family members. Um, you know, this is one of those things. It's just like, it, it, you know, they're they're being really kind of uh, nitpicky about it and just say that no, you should just eliminate that. So the, the correct answer on record here is C, uh, you know, but I'm thinking like you, if I, you know, that doesn't feel that out of line to me um, with the rest of the paragraph. And if I was, you're right, if I did use that, it would be after 11 because it flows into the fact that we introduced cell phones and their use among children. Uh, but just to, you know, keep uh, keep Paxson happy here, we'll, we'll go ahead and, uh, and put uh, C or remove the sentence. Okay. So, and our last one here for the paragraph. So, which is the best place for sentence 14? In these ways, telephones make people safer by giving them immediate access to help. 
So sentence 14, are we going to move it to the beginning? Are we going to remove it? Are we going to move it after 16 or move it after 17? So we'll take a look up here. Right now, it's here, the second sentence. In these ways, telephones make people safer by giving them immediate access to help. So, I think it can go at the end of the paragraph. At the, at the end of the paragraph? Is that what we said? After? Uh, yes, at the end. At the end. So, yeah. This is kind of a one to cap off, uh, you know, your, your, your end of your sentence. So this right here, we, you know, we're, we're introducing a final set of ideas. So finally, we talked about, you know, tr using transitions at the beginning of a paragraph. This is a great example. Finally, telephones enable instant access to emergency services. Uh, nice, broad introduction, topic sentence, but we do have that transition here from our other paragraphs. Um, so, you know, we eliminate 14 right there. We would go to emergency service providers such as police officers, firefighters, and doctors. All are, are all just a telephone number away. Distressed callers can reach these providers directly or contact them through the 911 system. With new cell phone technology, some of these services can be reached by the simple touch of a button. And then sentence 14, in these ways, telephones make people safer by giving them immediate access. We're punctuating that paragraph with a, a nice, you know, concluding sentence that wraps it all up, right? That in these ways, that transition at the beginning should point you to, okay, we, we have information that we've discussed here, right? So in these ways is telling us about the police officers and firefighters and, and distress callers. So telephones make people safer by giving them immediate access. We're gonna drop that after sentence 17. So that's answer D. All right. And let's get into the workbook. <clears throat> okay, so once again, a paragraph is logical and makes sense because it is organized in a specific way. The topic sentence introduces the subject or main idea of the paragraph and connects the ideas of the other sentences within the paragraph. The other sentences provide supporting details, which may include facts, statistics, explanations, examples, or analysis, which is what we encountered in that last set in our quiz. And then we have a diagram here to help us understand that relationship between the topic sentence and the other sentences in the paragraph. So our topic sentence is gonna branch out. We'll have supporting details in a sentence, supporting details in a sentence, and supporting details that all come underneath the topic sentence. And a lot of times, you know, as your writing gets more advanced, you'll, you'll close that. You may have supporting details in, the, in a final sentence of the paragraph, but you can kind of also uh, uh, punctuate it at the end with a nice closing uh, for each paragraph. Nothing too fancy, right? Just uh, like those points were made in, in, in our uh, paragraph before, just sort of pointing out some of the details and then wrapping them up at the end. So the topic sentences of paragraphs may provide an outline of the main ideas of the passage. And that's, you know, that's the idea there. You can sort of uh, introduce what is gonna happen in that paragraph with your topic sentence. Okay, so another paragraph here. If you suffer from allergies, you may find yourself making weekly visits to a doctor's office for an allergy shot. These visits can be expensive. Working out of St. Mary's Hospital in London, 1911, Leonard Noon and John Freeman experimented with the first allergy shots. Noon and Freeman administered low doses of the ex extract through shots. These researchers extracted pollen from grass 
and used the extract to treat people who suffered from hay fever. Pati patients received shots every three to four days. Noon and Freeman gradually increased the extract dosage by delivering a series of shots. Consequently, they found that they were able to relieve hay fever symptoms. If you suffer from allergies, you may find yourself making weekly visits to a doctor's office for an allergy shot. These visits can be expensive. Working out of St. Mary's Hospital. Whoa, wait a minute. It's the same thing. Okay, I don't know why they put it there twice. Huh, okay. So, content topics. Figurative language is not limited to fiction. Much nonfiction writing contains similes, metaphors, and analogies to explain information, to describe places, or simply to make the writing more enjoyable. So, yeah, you can use all of those similes, metaphors, analogies in nonfiction writing uh, if it's helping to make things relatable, if you're trying to add detail or an explanation. Okay, so <clears throat> looking at our paragraph here, which is the best place for sentence two? Uh, are we going to follow eight? Will we remove it? Should it follow sentence two or move, I'm sorry, move sentence to the beginning of the paragraph or move sentence to follow number six. So let's see here, talking about sentence two. If you suffer from allergies, you may find yourself making weekly visits to a doctor's office for an allergy shot. Sentence two, what we're targeting here, these visits can be expensive. What do we want to do with that? Do we put that at the beginning of the paragraph? Do we eliminate it? Will we move it after sentence eight? Move it after sentence six? How do you feel about that one? I think we should put it after scene six. This one, probably a little clearer that it doesn't belong. Now, if you did, yeah, patients receive shots every three to four days. Yeah, it will kind of fit. These visits can be expensive. Uh, if you look, though, right, our topic is if you suffer from allergies, you may find yourself making weekly visits to a doctor's office for an allergy shot. Certainly allergy shot is uh, the, the main subject, but what we get into here, right, is um, we're talking about the creation of allergy shots. So right after that, we're getting into, you know, Leonard Noon and John Freeman. We're discussing how they were made um, and, you know, how they were developed, what they uh, used them for, hay fever initially. So in this case, the expense of a visit, which we don't even actually talk about the allergy shot here. We just say these visits are can be expensive. It's a little bit abrupt. And it's, a li it's, it's enough of a different idea that we wouldn't put that in this sense. If we were going on to another paragraph, right, we might start talking about costs. We might start talking about health insurance, health care, things like that. It, it would probably fit better there. This one I'm a little more okay with as far as removing it than that last one. I thought that last one made a lot more sense where it was. It flowed, right? They had a transition statement and everything. This one feels a, does feel a little bit out of place. All right. And the next uh, for sentence four, Noon and Freeman administer low doses of the extract through shots. Do we remove that? Do we follow sentence six or sentence five or sentence seven? Where is that going to be best put? Let's see here. So they administered 
low doses of the extract through shots. So we know there's something that needs to come before that sentence because we haven't actually talked about extracts yet. Where we want to put that one? So let's try putting it under five. If it follows five, it makes more sense, right? Noon and Freeman administer low doses of the extract through shot. So if we go back, we look working out of St. Mary's Hospital in London in 1911, Leonard Noon and John Freeman experimented with the first allergy shots. These researchers extracted pollen from grass and used the extract to treat people who suffered from hay fever. Noon and Freeman administered low doses of the extract through shots. So there, if we uh, go with C, then it flows better, right? We introduce the extract. Okay, well, first they started by extracting pollen from grass. So we get to that idea, and then we move to the fact that they started giving those in low doses through shots. Then it flows a little better. So the answer is C there. Okay. Now <laughs> we're gonna build a paragraph and put things in order. So our sentences below, part of the first paragraph of the memo, we'll drag them and drop them in the boxes down here. Let's see what works. So I'll read through them real quick. Uh, the second goal was to ensure the employees were not unduly inconvenienced or penalized. Before deciding on this policy, a team of employees was given two major goals in examining our current processes. Last week, the team made its final recommendation to company management and the new policy was unanimously approved in an effort to control company cost and to establish a consistent process across our three locations. We are instituting a new travel policy for staff. The first goal was to see how our travel policies might be improved in a way that would limit costs. What's going to be our topic sentence? What do we want to start with here? What's going to make sense at the top? I think it's either going to be C or D. Okay, well, let's go with C. Okay. Um, C, in an effort to control company costs and to establish a consistent process across our three locations, we are instituting a new travel policy for all staff. So we're getting our main ideas here, right? Control company costs, that's a big idea. Uh, new travel policy for all staff. So let's see if I can drag that and drop it down there. Okay. So next, now it's first gonna start goal. Trigger. Before? This, the first goal. Okay. Um, Actually, it's going to be B. Okay. So after we, um, you know, we we get our topic there, you know, we're controlling costs. So before deciding on a policy, right, we haven't discussed the policy yet. We assemble a team of employees uh, given two major goals in examining our current processes. So that was the next effort, right? After deciding to control costs, they put a team together. What we want after that? Now it's the first goal and then the second goal. There you go, right? So the first goal was to see how our travel policies might be improved. And then we pretty much know after that, the second goal. And of course, that only leaves us one. So we move from basically our, our main idea, uh, effort to control company costs. Then we put together a team of employees, 
or given two major goals. The first goal to see how our travel policies might be improved in a way that would limit costs. The second goal was to ensure that companies were not unduly inconvenienced or penalized. And then last week, the team made its final recommendation and the new policy was unanimously improved. So that all flows logically, right? Main idea, we assemble a team, we have goals that we set, and then we uh, make a final recommendation. So C, B, E, A, D is the correct order. Don't want to reset, hit submit. Okay, <clears throat> and then finally, one more passage here. Uh, tips for making jewelry. Today, many people enjoy making their own earrings and bracelets. Making our own jewelry is easier than you might think. All you really need to get started is the desire to be creative. Now, a simple online search provides a variety of free instruction. In the past, you had to take you had to take special classes to learn the correct technique. What does it take to get started making jewelry? Beads come in a variety of shapes, colors, and sizes. You will find the best selection of beads at hobby shops and craft stores. For many people, the best materials to start with are beads. Among the basic supplies that you will need are a bead tray, a bead board, beading needles, twisted wire needles, and beeswax. You will also want to have tweezers, scissors, a beading awl, wire cutters, and flat nose pliers. You can pick up the basic skills you need to get started making jewelry in several ways. For example, you might go online and do a Google search for instructional videos and websites. Also, you can get a book from the craft store or from a local library. On the other hand, you may decide to let your imagination run wild. Some websites include great step-by-step -step demonstrations. Okay, so sentence four. Now, a simple online search provides a variety of free instruction. Do we move that to follow five, follow two? Are we going to remove it? Or should it follow sentence one? So, sentence four. Now, a simple online search provides a variety of free instruction. Where is that best going to fit? If we look, we have, we're showing the passage of time basically, right? Because we're using now, we're using the present. Where else may that fit? Looking at that, do we have, a, do, we, do we show the passage of time or an indication of time anywhere else in that first paragraph? I think maybe after five. There you go, right? And that's something you can look for. Some of those test taking tips, test taking skills. Uh, if you're if you're looking at something like this, okay, we have now. We're starting with that transition here, showing time. And if we look, then we see in the past in sentence five. In the past, you had to take special classes to learn the correct technique. Move that sentence below that. Now, a simple online search provides a variety of free instruction. So A, move that sentence to follow five. Okay. <clears throat> and then for many people, the best materials to start with are beads. So we're moving right into the second paragraph here. Um, so that's sentence nine. Do we want to put that at the beginning? Uh, follow sentence six, seven, or 10. So let's take a look here. Sentence nine. So it's our third sentence there. For many people, the best 
materials to start with are beads. Wait a minute here. Did I mess up something? I think it should come after. I'm sorry, can you scroll back up? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. Maybe why? I think it should come after six. After six? Yeah. So let's see. B. Okay. Yeah. So I forgot there's like, there's four paragraphs here. So I'm sorry about the scrolling. I, I, I got out of place. Um, what does it take to start to get started making jewelry? And then for many people, the best materials to start with are beads, right? So we're looking at jewelry. What's an easy way to start? And if you look, we immediately with seven jump into to beads, right? So down here, we wouldn't reintroduce that for many people, the best materials to start with are beads. So we move that to just behind six, answers B, and that's gonna make a lot more sense. Okay, then some websites include great step-by-step -step demonstrations. Do we remove it? Does it follow 14? Should it follow, or I'm sorry, should it be at the beginning? Or do we follow 13? So let's go back up here and take a look. Let's see. So, some websites include great step by step demonstrations. I think it should go after 12. After 12? How about after 13? Because I actually I don't think 12 is one of the options. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're close. Um, you're heading the right direction. So one more sentence to follow. So that'd be D. So it would read, you can pick up these base, you can pick up the basic skills you need to get started making jewelry in several ways. For example, you might go online and do a Google search for instructional videos and websites. So there we, we start talking about websites. And then we go down here, move 16, right there. Some websites include great step-by-step -step demonstrations. So that's gonna be D. And then on to seven. As you start, however, a note of caution for beginners, keep your projects simple. So is that coming after? 19, after 20, after 21, or do we put that at the beginning? So let's go back up here and take a look at sentence 18, where it is. So right now we have it as a second sentence. As you start, however, a note of caution for beginners, keep your projects simple. Or is that going to sound best? Let's put it at the beginning of the paragraph. Yeah, let's put it at the beginning. So that's answer D. So it's more of a topic sentence, right? Uh, there's not a lot of detail. As you start, we have a little bit of a transition. However, a note for a note of caution for beginners: keep your project simple. That's basically the rest of the paragraph. Is what we're talking about. Is is like in sentence 17. It takes practice to develop the skill needed to become really good at jewelry making. If you are patient, you will learn the necessary skills without making expensive mistakes. You see that those are more specific under that topic sentence of 
keep your project simple. And now on to eight. Okay, if there's, oh, new paragraph. Okay, new new idea. So let's read to, through that real quick and we'll finish off. We've got four left. Uh, you'll be pleased to know you are eligible for COBRA insurance benefits because you participated in a group health plan offered by your former employer. COBRA can provide health benefits identical to those you had with your previous healthcare plan. You may find that the price of premiums is unmanageable. The cost is so high because your former employer once paid for a large part of your insurance plan. With COBRA coverage, you pay the entire amount. A prudent insurance company is waiving its usual 2% administrative fee for customers who have recently lost their jobs. If there's a downside to COBRA coverage, it is the cost to you. There are other aspects about COBRA that you should know. For example, you can be covered from your last day of employment. You may also qualify for a reduced COBRA premium. These, this benefit means that you and your family will have insurance from the moment you leave your job without a waiting period. To qualify, you must have left your job after September 1st, 2013. So, which is the best place for sentence seven? If there's a downside to COBRA coverage, it is the cost to you. Are we going to follow three, four, put it at the beginning, or follow sentence five. If there's a downside to COBRA coverage, it is the cost well, I, I to I you. Like That's at and, the, right um, here, paragraph the B. The balance was different on that one, on the Paramount. So maybe that's just that How does that sound? But uh, right, yeah. Would that I, sound I, I like a topic set? I think I have it set up. What was that? But Matt, At the beginning? It, yes. And, so, uh, <clears throat> C, move sentence seven, seven to the beginning of paragraph like, well, B. And if you look, it makes a lot of sense, right? That is a very broad kind of idea. If there's a downside to COBRA coverage, it is the cost to you. So, um, you know, you see the rest of those ideas are more specific about the cost. Uh, we have that broad idea. We'll put that at the beginning, and then we go into you know. Yeah, you may find so that the price of premiums is unmanageable. The cost is so high because your former so employer once yeah. paid for a large part. Okay, three more. Here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So Jeannie, Jeannie, this benefit area, means right? that you and your family will yes. have insurance yeah. from the moment you leave your job without yeah. a waiting she's, for a period. So where do we want to put sentence eleven? Do we remove it mm -hmm. after eight, after 12, or after nine? Yeah. So yeah, sentence 11, really rough, rough sentence. this benefit means that you and your family will have insurance from the moment you leave your job you without a waiting time? period. Where is that going to work best? Yeah, see, we, we've got a gas stove, so we can always use the stove pop if the power goes out, but that's that's about it. But can we scroll back down to a few? Um, this apartment because we had a fire truck. So we took it because it has a big balcony. Um, you know, outside. You know, buildings okay. aren't all so it's under 11. D. So that's why we took it. Okay. So, for example, so we go to this benefit means that you and your family will have insurance from the moment you leave your job without a waiting period. We're going to give an example, right? Mm -hmm. For example, you could be covered from your last day of employment. That's telling you how it works. D. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And two more to go. Yeah. So, since 14, however, with cover, you are assured that you and your family will be taken care of in the event of illness. Uh, is that going to be oh, under 
15 at the beginning, after 18, or after 16. Yeah, when we have things so, power outages, we didn't let's see, see here, sentence 14. However, with Kerber, you are ensured like that you power, and your family will be taken care of in the event of illness power. or injury. So, like, so, where do we need to move um, that? That, however, should kind of give you an indication, right? That's yeah, a, that's that's a kind of position. Opening. Yeah. Well, I, I went ahead and bought a screen for my fireplace because we, we do have. So one. I bought a screen for the fireplace and we're at and stuff that I needed in the house. Here. I had that put up on the Monday at all at the grocery store. So after sixteen. Very good. Oh, yes. So, so the yes, the program is costly. You know, in contrast, so, however, you know, nevertheless, whatever you want to use there, right? But we have that transition. However, with COBRA, you are assured that you and your family will be taken care of in the event of illness or injury. So our last one here, let's see, so that's D. And so, sentence 17, in the end, you will save money by participating in COBRA. Um, do we? Follow. Yeah, so it looks like I thirteen. Did that right, but, um, remove it. Matt is saying that put it at the beginning or after sentence fourteen. So problem. let's take so a look here. Not, in the end, you will save money by participating in Cobra. Yeah, because we we got something on Friday. I think that got kicked back because there's whatever updates to the system. Everything has to be sent off. <coughs> so that might be related. But. Yeah, so keep warm, and I hope your power is back on soon, and I'll go with the cat. Thank you. Bye. Here's something else to think about. If it's taking you a while, I think it should go after 14. After 13? <clears throat> is there an option to get it after 14? Well, to go after we actually, 14? this is another case that we're just going to remove it. <laughs> they want okay. you to use B, remove the sentence. That's another one that's like, ah, well, you know, the, the, the thing they will throw you off there is like in the end, right? That transition. Yeah. Well, maybe I should put it at the end of the paragraph. Um, and if anywhere it might make sense there, um, the other weird thing about these is you have to consider what you've already moved around. Uh, you know, if you run into this on the, on, on a test, um, after you've moved things around, does that still kind of make sense where, uh, you know, even in, in the paragraph itself. So in this case, what we're actually what we've been talking about is in in, in the the um, content of the paragraph is cover provides a safety net while you transition to your next job, uh, and then you know it goes into points about you know it's uh, assurance that you and your family will be taken care of between mm -hmm. job transitions. Um, you know it offers you peace of mind. <clears throat> yes, it's costly. Um, but that last, that in the end, you will save money doesn't necessarily fit with the rest of it. So in this case, they're telling you to go ahead and remove it. And that is the end. So any questions here before we finish off the day? Yeah, transitions. Yeah. Here's the thing, you know, you're, you're probably going to run into this in, in, in your tests, right? You, you might have some, some examples. The bigger idea here to get used to is in your writing. You know, the, the, the finishing off the, these last few sections, yeah, you, the, there might be some examples on a test, but more importantly, when it comes to your writing and grouping your ideas together, that's what's really important here. So think about that. 
Um, I'll put up the video in a little bit. I will have some. Uh, oh, Amina, did you miss question six? Uh, on that final part, uh, question six is D. So there you go. Um, and I'll put that up for you guys uh, in a little bit. 